Why me? Because if I look for a motive within me for why me, all I discover is my sinfulness. And as I contemplate His holiness, I become more aware of my sinfulness. And as I contemplate His holiness and my sinfulness, then I become more aware that I richly deserve His righteous wrath in light of His holiness against my sinfulness. And I richly deserve His righteous wrath for an eternity in hell because of my sinfulness. Your view of sin would change if He gave you a passion for the holiness of God. You would no longer think in terms of sin as the damaging of man, but as the dishonoring of God. I've often wondered if Benny Hinn knows he's a fake, uh, or if he's just so self-deluded. I'm not sure. I think initially in his ministry, I think he may have begun with honorable intentions. I know you believe it, but you also say you only put on television miracles, miracle healings, which have been medically verified and proven. You know, Bob, so all we want to do is see the basis on which you say that. We have done all that we can do as a ministry to open a department, to have people check. You remember the little boy named William in, in Las Vegas a couple of years ago? You made him a star. You were going to set up a trust fund for him. You were going to put him through university. Um, he was supposedly cured of blindness. He's not cured of blindness. And his family says that they had a heck of a time even getting in touch with the ministry, let alone was there no follow-up about him. When he comes up on a platform, I'm only able to know what happens because they tell me so. But isn't that the point that they don't know, and neither do you? If I may say so, sir, you make a great deal of money on the basis of what you say. Well, let's, let's talk on camera. I'll answer your question. There's no problem with that. Well, we actually, we've been on camera. If I ever stood on a platform and said, I have been to heaven and seen Jesus leave my meeting. Tell me about your visit to heaven. How yes. many visits have you had? Several, several. If I ever tell you I can take you to heaven with me to visit Jesus, leave the service. Suddenly, what appeared to be the bosom of that person appeared the face of Jesus. Most people have difficulty believing <laughs> yes. that any human being can go to heaven and come back and talk about it. Yes, that is true. But seeing the results of your life on earth, I've been with you. I've been with you. I've, I, I've seen the incredible work you have in India. Yet some, please forgive me, simple-minded people have sat in meetings and listened to such nonsense of people telling them they have visited heaven and gone and talked to Abraham and had coffee with him. Pastor Nakhran, he yes. asks one of the apostles, Yes. Who have you spoken to? Paul and uh, Peter. You have spoken to Paul and Peter. Yes. In heaven? In heaven. But he has become intoxicated by the money. He's become intoxicated by the power. In the end, what you think about all this may come down not to what you believe, but who. The last word goes to Pastor Benny. Look at my eyes right here. Come, give me a close shot, will you, and look at these eyes. I have never liked you. Never. I never will. I'd rather die than lie to God's people. You would no longer think of sin as the choice of pleasure, but the loss of pleasure. You would think the righteousness of God is His unswerving allegiance to always be right by Himself, that is to exalt what is infinitely worthy, namely His holiness and His glory. This is a dimension of God that consumes His very essence. And when it is manifest to Isaiah, we read that at the sound of the voices of the seraphim, the doorposts, the thresholds of the temple itself shook and began to tremble. In the year that King Uzziah died, 
I saw the Lord high, lifted up, seated upon a throne, and His train, the train of His robe, filled the temple. And above Him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, and with two they covered their face, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew, and one cried to the other, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. And at that voice, the threshold of the temple shook. Do you hear that? Inanimate, lifeless, unintelligible, Parts of creation in the presence of the manifestation of the holiness of God had the good sense to be moved. How can we, made in His image, be indifferent or apathetic to His majesty? God alone is holy. There it is. The headless <laughs> horseman. This is on MSNBC. Let's play it back again. Let's do it. There he is. Okay, let's do it pause by pause. Does everyone else see this in the world? There's, the, of course they do. It's green. But did it's you? It's a headless but horseman. But did you catch it? You can see it now. But did there's you catch it the initially? There's the headless horseman. What is this phantom object? But they're replaying this so. Oh my like god. Like galloping through the crowd. What is that? Two. Two. Oh my god. To disappear. Vanish. It goes up at the end. <laughs> it goes straight up. You're going in slow mo, huh? Poof. No, but poof, it, poof. it doesn't keep going on its track, no. it goes up. And um, was anybody there even looking at this thing? Let's go back and watch one more time. Was anybody noticing the okay. invisible horseman there? We noticed it at the exact same time because it's any, revving up. Is anybody looking at this thing? <laughs> and it goes straight up. Does it matter to you today? Does it matter to you at all that God's spiritual Jerusalem, the church? is now married to the world. There's such a coldness sweeping the land. Closer than that, does it matter about the Jerusalem that's in our own hearts? The sign of ruin that's slowly draining spiritual power and passion? Blind to lukewarmness? Blind to the mixture that's creeping in. You see, when spiritual blindness comes, not if you recognize it, 
It's the last recognized thing that happened.